Hi, this is a video introduction to the hydrolysis of triglycerides laboratory experiment. In this lab, we're going to learn how to make soap. Before this lab, you should review some of the material that we've covered so far. You'll want to review the material on fatty acids and their interaction with water to form micelles. This is how fatty acids act as soap molecules. You'll also want to review the information about triglycerides, the molecules that we know as oils and fats. In short, triglycerides are formed by condensation reactions between glycerol and fatty acids. In this cartoon, the glycerol is shown as this green molecule with three alcohol functional groups. And cartoons of fatty acids are shown with their carboxylic acid functional group apparent. In a condensation reaction, three water molecules are formed, while three ester functional groups are also formed. This new molecule is a triglyceride. Here are the molecular structures of a condensation reaction. Once again, glycerol and three fatty acids condense to give you a triglyceride. The new functional group here is an ester, and it came from the alcohols and carboxylic acids on glycerol and three fatty acids. Water is also a product because this is a condensation reaction. This reaction is represented on your laboratory handout. It looks like this. It's drawn a little bit differently, but it means the same thing. We're taking glycerol and three fatty acids. Here, the fatty acid chain, or the hydrocarbon chain, is represented by R, just like the fatty acid chain is represented by this little um, bubble here in my cartoon. So R is just the fatty acid chain. Any three fatty acids plus glycerol will form a triglyceride and water. In this reaction, it's not balanced because there should be three water molecules that form in this particular reaction. In triglycerides, the actual identity of the fatty acid tails can vary depending on where the oil has come from. On your lab handout, I've given you several different fatty acid chains that are part of natural triglycerides. Here they are with their chemical structures. Notice their differences. Some of them are saturated, some of them are unsaturated, and one of them even has a, an alcohol functional group on it. The different structures of these fatty acids give different properties to oils and fats. We're going to make soap out of olive oil. The fatty acid makeup of olive oil is shown at the bottom of this figure. The actual percentages of each one of these different fatty acids that are part of olive oil will vary depending on the season and the source of the olive oil. Now let's talk about hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is the opposite of condensation. Here in this cartoon, I'm showing you a triglyceride plus three waters goes back to a glycerol and three fatty acids. And here's the same type of reaction with actual chemical structures. I take a triglyceride with three fatty acid tails attached to a glycerol molecule. I add three waters and I hydrolyze to get glycerol and three fatty acids. This reaction is also shown on your lab handout, just in a little bit of a different way. Here is the triglyceride. The glycerol in this figure is shown in the center, whereas on the figure above, or the way that you've seen it before, it was shown off to the right or the left-hand side. But each one of the oxygens on the three-carbon part of glycerol is bound to a fatty acid, where R is the long fatty acid tail. When I add water to this, I do a hydrolysis reaction. In lab, we are not going to use just water, because just water would take forever to react. You can make this reaction happen faster and more efficiently by adding sodium hydroxide. This is not technically a catalyst because the sodium hydroxide is actually reacting with the triglyceride to give you glycerol and a fatty acid carboxylate salt. Atoms move around in a similar way as they do if this was three water molecules. One of the hydrogens of water sticks onto the alcohol group of glycerol and the NaO goes to the carboxylic acid functional group which ends up being a carboxylate instead of a carboxylic acid. Here's another representation of a hydrolysis reaction. This is the cartoon that's shown on your lab handout. This is a picture of an oil where this is the triglyceride made of glycerol and three fatty acid tails represented by squiggly lines and an ester functional group. 
When we add three times the amount of sodium hydroxide, each hydroxide will react with each one of these carbonyl functional groups, and it will give you glycerol and three fatty acid salts. Now, this is what makes up soap. When this fatty acid salt meets water, it makes micelles, which can carry away dirt and oil in a water solution. During this lab, you'll also see the difference between hard and soft water in its effectiveness of making soap suds. The difference between hard and soft water are the ions that are present in the water. Soft water has the ions that have plus one charges, like sodium and potassium. When these things are the counter ion or the positively charged ion with the carboxylate functional groups of fatty acids, they make micelles in water. In soft water, fatty acid salts act like soap. They form micelles and they carry dirt and oil away in the water solution. Hard water, on the other hand, has more divalent ions, which means that they have more calcium and magnesium ions, which have two plus charges, or positive two charges. The calcium and magnesium, or any ion that has a plus two charge, will interact differently with these fatty acid ions. Each calcium, for example, will be attracted to two of the fatty acids. And now you have a cluster of ions that have lo long nonpolar parts on either side. This causes them to aggregate and form soap scum. Soap in general is more sudsy in soft water than it is in hard water. And in hard water, soap forms soap scum. Now you know a little bit about the chemistry of making soap and how soap interacts with hard and soft water. During this experiment, be very careful with the sodium hydroxide. This is a very corrosive chemical and it will burn your skin. So don't forget to wear your safety glasses. Now have fun and enjoy making your soap.